back then, you know, kings and the, the, no, uh, the nobilities are, um, so it's a big thing. So all these great people, kings and nobilities and the gods and goddesses, they were, they were all uh, the fruition or the products of Dharma. So what it means here is that the Dharma tells us, <clears throat> the Dharma, so there's a, in, in Sanskrit, there's a word called Dharma and Adharma. Uh, so to simply translate Dharma, you can say Dharma is righteous and righteousness and Adharma is uh, non-righteousness. So what is right and what is not right, that is the Dharma and the Adharma. The opposite of Dharma is not right and the Dharma is right. So the Dharma is not about a specific religion or, you know, this uh, specific teacher or Buddha or, you know, Hinduism or that kind of thing. But Dharma is um, uh, what is righteous is Dharma. What is not, not righteous is Adharma. So in this regard, when you practice Dharma, but when you practice what is right, what is righteous, then you get the benefit of all the great things uh, as to be born as kings, as nobilities, as gods, uh, with wealth and stuff like that. So this is what it's talking about. <clears throat> so uh, kings and uh, nobilities and wealthy people, so these were all, we are talking about the mundane world, the worldly, it, 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 we are talking about in the worldly scenario. In a worldly manner, they are the greatest people, uh, kings and emperors and, you know, um, nobilities and wealth and stuff like that, uh, gods and uh, goddesses like that. Uh, but in the spiritual world, uh, then we have um, all these people like kings and uh, that, you know, kings and queens and nobilities are not much of a um, thing because uh, all these things are part of this world. Uh, that's why they are called worldly. worldly um, so the kings and queens and uh, the uh, wealthy people and nobilities, so they are part of this world alone. So they do not transcend the next world or the after afterlife. Um, so because this world is nothing much, no more than a uh, hundred years at most. Uh, when the hundred years gone, then everything uh, <clears throat> everything is gone. But uh, when we talk about the spiritual world, we are talking about something that transcends. Um, the this this um, this world alone, this present life alone. Of course, we are not neglecting the uh, present world, present life. Uh, of course, we must cherish this life because this life is precious. Uh, we must cherish this life, but uh, we must not. Uh, if we think only about if we think about if we think only about this world alone, then. Uh, we are becoming too narrow-minded. So, uh, so the spiritual world is something that transcends this uh, the present world, present life. And uh, so, the kings and queens and all these are the worldly, um, uh, the, the important things and precious things of the world, the, the, this world uh, alone. Um, but the Dharma does not benefit this world alone, but also it, it benefits the next life as well by creating or by making uh, the Buddhas, the Prateke Buddhas, the Arhats and all the other uh, great sages and saints who are also the product of the perfect Dharma. Meaning by practicing the Dharma, uh, there, there is the Bodhisattva, by practicing Dharma, the Buddhas come into this world. By practicing Dharma, the Prateke Buddhas and oh, they all come to this world. So the next line says, uh, point number three, which is the arising and existing of stream enterers, um, uh, coming and non-coming, uh, non-returners, and uh, arhats, pratikya buddhas, and holy omniscient buddhas in this world are a quality of the perfect dharma. So stream ent ent enterers is a term used for a certain uh, type of uh, practitioner, a certain type of uh, uh, realized um, holy people, people. So, like when once you enter a stream, you are bound to get to the bottom of uh, that stream. What you are bound to get to the bottom of that, the, to the to the end line. Uh, 
uh, it's just like entering a bus. When you enter the bus, uh, the, you will get to the end destination of the bus. So similarly, a stream enter is someone who is uh, def uh, definite uh, to get to the bottom, uh, meaning to get to they 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 they, they were uh, destined or they were definite to get to the bottom or to get to the ultimate uh, realization, which is nirvana in this case. <clears throat> and uh, mm, stream enterers in general uh, can get to the um, bottom of the line or nirvana, but just like someone going through a bus, one has to uh, one may one may have to enter and de-enter the bus. You know, one may have to end, ex enter and exit. Uh, so it. Um, so the, a, a, a public bus usually stops at many different places, so it takes much longer time. But if you hire a car for yourself, then you can get to the, your ultimate destination without stopping anywhere. So, uh, so the uh, the stream enterer is someone tra traveling by the public transport, and then the returner and the non-edge returner they are someone who has some somewhat like a hired a, a private car. So private taxi, so then you can get from one point to the next without stopping anywhere uh, um, because it's your own, you have hired the car for yourself, uh, so you don't have to make any stops. Uh, so uh, eventually this this is a faster route. <clears throat> and then Arhat is someone who has reached uh, Nirvana. Then the Prateke Buddha uh, is uh, someone who does not rely upon any other any other teachers uh, in order to attain nirvana. And the Buddha and Bodhisattvas, we all uh, we, we are quite familiar with these terms. Well, so the next point is that uh, the Bud the Buddhas. Uh, so when we talk about the Buddhas, there are two types of uh, the Buddhas' appearance in this world are two types, uh, twofold. One is called uh, the enjoyment body. Um, <clears throat> we see the Buddha in the form of an enjoyment body, or we see the Buddha in the form of uh, uh, emanation body. Um, the emanation body is seen by one and all. Uh, anyone can see it, even if you are, um, even if you are not a uh, highly realized person, you can still see your emanation body, Buddha, like the Buddha Shakyamuni, who was. Uh, Buddha in the emanation body form, uh, let's call it uh, emanation form. And then the uh, enjoyment body or the enjoyment form, one can be seen only by uh, people, uh, individuals who have uh, reached the first stage of bodhicitta uh, or bodhisattva, the first stage of the 10 stages of bodhisattva. Uh, the, the 10 stages of bodhisattva um, are all um, Arya Bodhisattvas, meaning noble Bodhisattvas. So there are Bodhisattvas which are which have not yet been uh, out of samsara, and then there are Bodhisattvas which are out of samsara. So the Arya Bodhisattvas are Bodhisattvas free from the uh, trappings of samsara. And uh, so within the Arya Bodhisattva, there are ten grounds or ten stages. So a Bodhisattva only a Bodhisattva who has reached the first ground or first stage of a Bodhisattva can of Bodhicitta can uh, see uh, enjoyment body uh, Buddha. So in any way, <clears throat> the two Buddhas that uh, come to this world uh, in the form of emanation body or in the form of in the form of emanation body or in the form of uh, enjoyment body, they all come back to this world to inspire, to help, to rescue, to support, to protect. Uh, the sentient beings to liberate the sentient beings uh, only due to the fact that they have compassion. So if they don't have the compassion, they will never come back for us. Once they are liberated themselves, they will forget all of us. Uh, but the reason that they come back to uh, teach us, to liberate us, to look after us is the fact that they have compassion. And the compassion, even though uh, compassion in general, as His Holiness usually say, is a natural instinct. That, you know, we have compassion towards people we love in general. But the compassion that the Bodhisattvas have is called a Maha, uh, uh, great compassion, uh, great compassion, uh, the Bodhi, Bodhi, Bodhicitta, which actually 
uh, is derived from great compassion. And great compassion looks after uh, everyone equally, whether it's someone close to you or not close to you, uh, someone close to you or someone far away from you. The bodhicitta or the uh, which is derived from the seed of compassion, the great compassion, the great compassion actually looks after one and all uh, equally, with equal manner. And uh, that great compassion has to be taught or has to be trained. Compassion we have within ourselves instinctively, but great compassion is something that we have to train for. And that training comes from the Dharma. And uh, so <clears throat> in a manner of speaking, we see that all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, uh, the Buddhas come back to this world to teach us because of great compassion, and the great compassion comes from the training taught in the Dharma. So therefore, the Dharma is the reason why the Buddhas come back to this world in the two form, uh, twofold forms of uh, enjoyment body and uh, emanation body. Um, so next is something all the excellent means of sustenance of all sentient beings, the appropriate rising of power through aspirations of Bodhisattva is the quality of perfect Dharma. So what it actually means here is that uh, all the uh, good things that we enjoy in life are, are part of our byproduct or, or product of uh, the Dharma uh, through which we um, are able to survive, through which we are able to live our lives. Uh, we are able to go on with our lives. Um, <clears throat> and uh, through which we are able to generate bodhicitta for uh, fellow sentient beings who does not have the same livelihood as we are. Um, and uh, the reason is same uh, sim uh, as, 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 as uh, the reason is same as I explained earlier, because Dharma uh, means righteousness, and uh, since in order to in order to enjoy, in order to uh, get the good things in life, in order to um, in, in order to be able to appreciate life, in, in order not just to have good things in life, but also to be able to appreciate the good things that is happening in your life, uh, for everything, uh, it, everything comes from cause and conditions. Uh, so there is a, because there is a cause, there is an um, effect. Because of this, that comes, remember? So <clears throat> cause and conditions apply uh, to everything in this world, in, 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 the, in the world. Um, so because of that, all the good things that we enjoy, all the good things that is, that is in our life, as well as all the good things that we are able to enjoy. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of good things in your life, and, but you are not able to enjoy it. It happens to many people with wealth. Um, they are able to amass a huge amount of wealth in their lifetime, but at the same time they are so um, kind of like scared in a way to spend it, to in the fear they, they, even though they have, they monetarily, even though monetarily they could afford everything, but mentally they could not afford anything. So these kind of things happen. Um, so to able to afford things mentally, you need to be able to appreciate life, appreciate the good things that you have in life. And once you are able to do so, then you you, you will be able to spend. You will not be able to get stuck. Uh, with the wealth that you have, so uh, in so in this in this regard, all these things come uh, from uh, practicing the dharma, which is the righteous uh, path or the righteous um, the the rightful approach, the righteous approach. And so by by following the righteous approach, one creates the causes and conditions for rightful things to come in one's life, and therefore one is able to enjoy good things in life through that. Now point numbers uh, six, seven, eight that uh, we can combine together. So the arising of slight and momentary happiness due to the result of the merits of virtuous actions in lower migration, uh, prolonged unhappiness is a quality um, of the perfect Dharma. So people in the lower, uh, lower realm, such as hell realm or animal realm, uh, the reason, uh, you know, <clears throat> even though you were born in the animal realm, sometimes people give food to you, sometimes receive good things in, uh, as, an, as an animal. Uh, sometimes even in the uh, hell realm, there is a slight momentary happiness you might receive. And these are due to uh, the practice of the Dharma that you have 
um, uh, committed in your previous lives, uh, which uh, uh, which matured at that particular time. Um, so similarly, uh, point number seven: when a bad person's mind follows the path uh, of right righteousness or dharma, and uh, that person, a bad person, is usually infamous. Uh, people talk behind uh, the, a bad person. Um, people speak badly about him, and so on and so forth. But if the bad person actually follows the rightful path of the dharma, and if the person sort of mends his way, then everyone will say, oh, he used to be a, such a bad person, but now he's a good person, and that person will be respected in the society and uh, will be loved by all. Even though that person has a bad history, uh, that history can be deleted by practicing, uh, we can sort of reversed, because that bad history can be reversed by practicing the Holy Dharma. And the point number eight says, when someone has been committing wrongdoing since the previous life, it is like adding fuel to the fire of hell. Uh, in this state, if he changes his mind toward the Dharma or the right for uh, the righteousness, then that person actually creates the causes and conditions uh, for a, a better rebirth, a better life. So even though someone, because one has committed bad things in previous life, or one has a bad um, negative, uh, one one is uh, one is doomed uh, to suffer in this life, but if that person uh, instead of uh, falling in the same negative ways as previous lives, but follows <clears throat> the rightful path of the Dharma in this this life, then that person can have a tremendous change, uh, upgrade if you like, uh, of lives in the afterlife as well as in this life as well. Okay, so point number nine is only to have faith, respect, and delight in Jinan Dharma as well as wearing of the dress of a monk creates a sense of respect among the ordinary people. So making the base of such respect is the quality of perfect Dharma. So <clears throat> in uh, in many uh, um, in, in 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 Tibet, uh, so this this is this particular uh, line we're talking about in Tibet uh, where. Uh, people who wear the monks' robes as highly respected, and uh, so um, that per that that person himself, the person who wears the monk's robe, may or may not be perfect, uh, but it symbolizes uh, someone who's following the path of the Dharma, which is um, the path of Dharma taught by Buddha, uh, which leads people to liberation, uh, liberation, freedom from all sufferings. So because of that, one respects the the, the cloth, the robes, and uh, by doing so, one uh, the creates the karma, or one creates the seed. One one sows the seed, positive seed of uh, seed of liberation by appreciating something. Uh, you know, when we appreciate something, when we usually look forward to it. So when we look forward to something, uh, amongst uh, our robes which symbolizes liberation from samsara, we're actually looking forward to uh, liberation from samsara or, uh, or nirvana, uh, which is the liberation from samsara. So when we appreciate or when we rejoice in seeing the uh, robes and the, you know, things like that, we're actually rejoicing in the um, idea of uh, nirvana. So therefore, <clears throat> uh, it does, it does sows the seed of uh, liberation among uh, people who does who, who, who does that, and so therefore these all are the products of the Dharma. So uh, point number ten says that after receiving the teachings and uh, after learning about the Dharma, of course one should not sit like that, but uh, instead put it into practice. Uh, one should practice, and one should uh, the best best place to start your practice is through solitary meditation. And even if you are to start uh, going into solitary meditation, solitary meaning by yourself alone, uh, <clears throat> still you will not face any difficulties uh, finding food and sustenance. Uh, that is also the benefit of the Dharma. Mm, uh, so even though even even though you are staying up there in the mountain, some people. So this is very uh, you know this 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 scenario is very much prevalent in Tibet, where, uh, where uh, people you know uh, start uh, meditating in the hermitages, uh, very high up in the mountain, uh, very 
um, distanced from local people, uh, distanced from the villages, uh, you know, very difficult to go there. Still, uh, you know, once or um, once in a month or once in two, three months, people come to the uh, hermitages. Uh, even if, I remember when I was a kid, I used to, my, my father would bring me up to the, uh, in, 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 in Dharamsala, where his holiness lives, there used to be uh, many great uh, uh, hermits uh, living up in the mountain. So my father would, uh, on Sundays, I think, I don't know exactly what days they were, but he would bring me up uh, to the mountains to see the hermits. So we will, uh, we don't have much to offer, but we will bring like Zamba, you know, it's just, which is a stable Tibetan diet. So we would bring Zamba and uh, like maybe some bread and stuff like that. And uh, we would go there, actually, my father and me, we would go there um, like one, twice a month, usually. So we would go to different um, hermits and make offering to them and then listening to listen to their advices and stuff like that. Sometimes when they are in deep meditation, we don't disturb them, but we leave food for them outside. Uh, there is a place to leave things, so we don't disturb them. We just leave the things and then we go away. So it's a, uh, it's a very prevalent practice in Tibet and that has been somewhat kept uh, in when we came to India in, in exile. Uh, and another thing that I would like to share is the fact that uh, in Tibet, so there is a huge difference between the Theravada tradition or the original tradition in the Buddha in, in the Buddha, Buddha's lineages, Buddha's fellowship, and uh, uh, those in Tibet, uh, or you might say uh, in the Mahayana tradition. So in the Theravada tradition or the Buddha's original sort of fellowship, you will see the monks still going out, uh, go, going out to uh, to beg alms, to beg for food. Uh, but in any of the none of the Mahayana Buddhist, whether it's China, um, Tibet, or uh, Japan, you, will, you you don't see the monks going out to beg for food. Instead, uh, the food is being offered by the lay people to the monastery. They would come to offer it. <clears throat> so there's a huge difference. Uh, in Theravada tradition, they would still go every day out um, uh, to do that. And uh, I don't know about the other traditions, but in Tibet, it used to be, it used to say that uh, the king mandated when Buddhism was first brought into the Dar, uh, in, into Tibet, the king mandated that uh, um, the monks, the king revered the monks so much, respected and revered the monks so much that he said each monk should be looked after by four families. So the monks do not have to go to or back for arms, but the four families look after one monk. So that's how it started, and that's how the monks were, uh, the offerings were made uh, to the monasteries or to the in individual monks, and the monks does not have to go to beg for alms. And um, in the Theravada tradition, uh, the uh, the explanation is that the monks has to go out to beg for food. Uh, so uh, by begging for food, the monks understand the preciousness or the value. The individual monks, even though there are monks, uh, we are all monks, but we are still in the process of becoming perfect, we are not perfect yet, so we still have a lot to learn as a monk. Even so, uh, um, so we know the humility. We know, uh, you know, when we beg for something, we always have to beg with humility, and we we we, we understand, we know the value. We learn the value of humility. Also, we learn the value of each uh, item that we have to uh, beg for. Uh, which is very beautiful, I think. Uh, whether it's raining or whatever, the monks in Theravada tradition, they would go out and beg for food. Uh, and also, from the layman's perspective, they get to gain merit by making the offerings to the monks. So there's a twofold uh, benefit. That's the explanation made by the Theravada monks. So anyway, uh, that was the case in Tibet and uh, in all of the Mahayana tradition, the monks do not go out to beg for food. Uh, but uh, in the yeah, Theravada tradition, they would go out to beg for food. Uh, so the point is that in general, the people who practice, people who are living in solitary meditation, they don't have to worry about food and sustenance. This is in, we are talking about this in general. But uh, of course, there are particular cases where, uh, you know, due to their own karma, uh, one a good example is Master Gambopa's own teacher, Milarepa, who has to suffer a lot, not getting sufficient food and stuff while doing meditation. So that's why he's so frail and uh, he's eating leaves and things like that.
And also we will, if you look at the story of Buddha, with the ascetic Buddha, Buddha becomes so frail, so uh, skinny, and so on and so forth. He, Buddha himself was, uh, if you look at from a worldly perspective, he, he was going against his own word, uh, let alone the followers of the Buddha. Buddha himself was not getting enough food to eat. Um, so if you look at from the worldly perspective, you will see something like that. Uh, but in general, people who follow the Dharma does not have to worry about food. Um, whether it, it, whether it be it in the Theravada tradition, you can get food by begging for alms, or in the Mayana tradition, the lay people come to offer to the monks. So you don't have to worry about sustenance at all as a practitioner. And this is, of course, due to the thanks due to the Dharma. Okay, <clears throat> so this concludes the uh, long list of the benefits of the, the Buddha Dharma. Uh, so we have been covering that for like over four or five weeks. So we concluded here today. Then open for uh, questions or any uh, feedbacks, any suggestions. Yeah. We have a one question, Rumichela. Mm -hmm. um, question, uh, Rumichela. Uh, do we have a chance to see an enjoyment body uh, Buddha in this life? Thank you, Rumichela. Yes, we do. We always have a chance to see the Buddha, not only the chance to see a Buddha, enjoyment Buddha, Buddha in the enjoyment form in this life, but to, uh, um, but to generate uh, enjoyment Buddha form ourselves in this life as well. Uh, uh, we to do this, we have to practice the Dharma, and we have to um, practice the Dharma, of course, thoroughly, and uh, follow the teachings thoroughly and practice it um, um, with full determination. One can just say that. Uh, if you, if one practices without fail, <clears throat> especially the Vajrayana has the, uh, uh, since we are uh, fortunate to um, have have the presence of Vajrayana practices and teachings and great masters and teachers in the world today, uh, the Vajrayana uh, teachings can liberate us. To we can can the the, the Vajrayana uh, teachings can deliver us to the Buddhahood in this very lifetime. Actually, to be precise, uh, within uh, three years, three months, and three days time, if you, if one was to uh, practice with the determination, one can be liberated within three years, which is even faster than what Buddha Shakyamuni himself uh, got enlightened. So, um, uh, you, one might say this is quite um, dubious, uh, doubtful because you are doing something more advanced than the Buddha Shakyamuni. So what we believe in, so there is the historical uh, account of the Buddha's enlightenment, and then there is the what we call the definite account of the Buddha's uh, enlightenment, which is comes from the, uh, the Vajrayana practices. Uh, so in in general, in Mahayana teachings in general, we don't believe Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, Prince Siddhartha, to be an ordinary person. He is someone who has already become Buddha, or already enlightened uh, eons and eons ago, and he came back to manifest the appearance of becoming a Buddha as an ordinary person in this life. And uh, so therefore he took the, uh, uh, the hardship and the, uh, the sustenance, uh, the, uh, the meditation and all the, he, he struggled uh, to become a Buddha for six years, uh, but in real life, uh, he was a bit of Buddha before that. Uh, this is the definite explanation or definite account of the Buddha's uh, story. Um, <clears throat> so, in any way, one one is not uh, one does one does not only have the uh, the the opportunity and the potential to see the Buddha in the enjoyment form in this lifetime, but is able to become a Buddha and able to, uh, and, and generate the enjoyment body in this lifetime. One does have that. But uh, if your question is, can we see the enjoyment Buddha, uh, the form of enjoyment Buddha in this lifetime, in this state, in the state that we are currently in, 
then it's a no. Uh, one can see, uh, unless one reaches the stages of the first Bodhi, Bodhisattva, one cannot see the Buddha in the enjoyment form. And the current state that in the state that we are in currently, we cannot see a Buddha in enjoyment form. But we do have the potential to see the Buddha uh, in the enjoyment mm -hmm. form in our own life, lifetime. So uh, normally in uh, common Mahayana, so common and uncommon Mahayana, when we say common Mahayana, we are talking about Mahayana practices in general. Uh, which uh, Vajrayana is part of Mahayana practices, Mahayana teachings. When we say uncommon Mahayana, we are referring to Vajrayana specifically. So uh, in the common Mahayana, uh, we are <clears throat> uh, the, the teacher, the Buddhas, all appear in the, enjoy, uh, the, the, uh, the emanation body, like the Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, and uh, all the Buddhas like the Medicine Buddha and so on and so forth, all the Buddhas uh, in the common uh, Mahayana teachings, they teach, uh, they make, they, 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 um, uh, they spread the teaching, they propagate the teachings of the Dharma uh, as in the form of uh, uh, emanation body. So emanation, so think to, 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 uh, um, to simplify things, to simplify things, all the Buddhas appear in the monk uh, as a monk, as a bhikshu uh, to teach in the uh, emanation form, to teach the common, uh, to teach the common Mahayana Dharma. And when the Buddha is to teach in the uncommon Mahayana or the uh, esoteric teachings of the Vajrayana, then the Buddhas appear in the enjoyment form of, uh, uh, for example. Uh, if you look at the uh, in the in the center in Hanoi right now, uh, if you look behind yourself, you will see the uh, picture of the um, uh, Amitayus Buddha. Uh, so Amitayus Buddha is not uh, none other than Amitabha Buddha, but Amitabha Buddha is a bhikshu uh, wearing the robes and stuff, and Amitaya Amitayus Buddha is a deity, meaning is uh, actually in the form of a goddess not in the form of a human being. So all the emanation body usually, usually appears in the form of a human being, but not always, uh, but usually appears in the form of a human being. And uh, the uh, enjoyment body usually uh, always appears in the, not usually, but always appears in the form of a god or goddess. So Amitayus Buddha is in the form of a goddess and is, uh, is does not, appear in the form of a monk, but has all the, you know, the silk robe, the crown, the, uh, the jewels and everything. So it's the same person in different, um, uh, Amitayus Buddha and Amitabha Buddha are the same person, but they appear in different uh, aspects in order to deal with different people uh, through different uh, types mm -hmm. of teachings. <clears throat> so the right behind you is Amitayus Buddha. That is actually none other than Amitabha Buddha, who is a monk. And the Buddha Shakyamuni himself is a monk. When he teaches the uncommon Mahayana teachings, Dharma, he appears in the form of a monk with robes. But when he te teaches the Vajrayana teachings, uh, Vajrayana doctrine, he is in the form of Vajradhara, uh, the blue form uh, Buddha. Um, so it's the same person uh, dressed in different, dressed differently to deal with different people with different mental ability. Um, uh, so, 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 so they appear in different forms to deal with different things. Um, so, of course, we have the replica of the enjoyment body in right behind us in the form of what uh, Amitabha is Buddha, Buddha and stuff. So we can see that, but uh, we will not be able to see an actual. Uh, enjoyment body if they are to appear before us unless we reach the stage of the first ground or first stage of bodhicitta, bodhisattva. Okay. No question, Guru Okay, okay, sure. This last question. Um, prostrate Guru Bucela, is there a chance arising of slight and mo uh, momentary 
momentarily happiness due to the result of merits of virtuous actions in lower migration, prolonged unhappiness, life in hell, and in the form of ghosts and animal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <clears throat> so uh, momentary relief. Uh, momentary reliefs are possible even though uh, or momentary reliefs are possible in lower realms, especially uh, um, especially in hell realm. <clears throat> uh, mm, even though the translation, uh, the meaning of uh, hell, or even though in English we just call hell, the Sanskrit word for uh, hell, as described by uh, described in the Buddha Dharma, is narg which means there is no form of uh, happiness. So there is no moment of happiness at all. Uh, even though this is the name of hell realm, uh, one can still have momentary relief uh, due to certain, uh, let's say, miraculous uh, feats um, uh, uh, made by Bodh Bodhisattvas and uh, the Buddhas. So, so, so this to to understand that one has to understand one has to understand the Buddha Dharma in in much much deeper way. Otherwise, one would say, okay, how can the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas interfere with my own karma? We suffer because of our my own karma. So, if Buddhas and Bodhisattvas can meddle with that, mess with that, interact with my own karma, then why shouldn't since the Buddhas are seemingly um, ha Buddhas have matchless power. Uh, why couldn't they put all of us out of misery? So this uh, question might, ar might arise. So in understand this, one has to understand something called, uh, in Tibetan we use the word called Tebe Alon Mena Tuji Jaipi Mema Peng Maris. So Tebe Alon is the, 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 the ring. <clears throat> the ring of faith is necessary for the hook of uh, compassion uh, to clinch, to clench. So Buddha has the compassion, which is like a hook. The Buddhas have the compassion. But we also need to have the faith, uh, the ring of faith. So if there's a ring, then the hook can actually, uh, you know, uh, the, the hook can uh, clench on the ring. So the ring of faith is necessary uh, for the for the people who are suffering in order to be saved by the Savior, by the Buddha. So if that ring is there, then the hook can actually hook up on the ring. <clears throat> so there, so in, in, in that regard, uh, there is a chance for the karma, or uh, my karma to be intercepted by the Buddha's uh, powers. Uh, otherwise, no matter how powerful the Buddhas are, they cannot intercept or interfere with our karma. There is a saying also that the Buddha's power and our karma are equally powerful. So um, they, they, they have a check and balance in thing. So Buddha, even though Buddha has matchless power, Buddha is, Buddha is no more powerful than our own karma. And our own karma is no less powerful than the Buddha's miracle miracles. So in order for the Buddha's power to walk, we have to actually create a space for the Buddha's power uh, to walk, which is by having faith in the Buddha's, uh, in the Buddha's uh, potential, the power to, uh, to save us. So when, when the faith is there, then we make a space. Uh, we, 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 um, we sort of like uh, switch on our receptors for the Buddha's power uh, to intercept with our own karma, and that then the Buddha, our karma and the Buddha's power work in tune, and that's how we can get relief, um, uh, momentary relief, uh, in uh, places such like uh, in, in 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 places where there is no happiness or relief at all, such as hell hell realm. Um, <clears throat> and another thing is uh, when people who are connected to us, like our relatives and our loved ones, when they make prayer for us, when they make uh, prayers and uh, when they pray for us, uh, then due to the karmic connection that we have with our loved ones and our relatives, uh, we can uh, uh, 
get uh, the opportunity, the chance to uh, gain uh, um, momentary peace or momentary relief, even in uh, places such as uh, Hell Realm. <clears throat> Yeah. I have a one more short question. Would you take it okay. today? You can wait until next week. Yeah. 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 You yeah, yeah, can take it. Um, Rimuchela, is there a prerequisite to enter the three years and three months retreat? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, so the thing is, uh, in Tibetan, we call some. We have some, We call this Tumon Lamjang. Uh, which is can be translated as uh, um, training in the common path <clears throat> or orientation of the common path, familiarizing yourself in the common path. So the common path is uh, the understanding of uh, um, the law of causality, cause and effects, um, uh, Im impermanence, uh, bodhicitta, Compassion, great compassion, and emptiness, and so on and so forth. So it's important to familiarize oneself with these ideas, not uh, not just by listening, you know, uh, hearing one or two words from a teacher, but actually uh, familiarizing yourself with uh, books on such um, things. Uh, for example, so let's talk about in, in for, for example, in Tibetan Buddhism, uh, we have different sects or schools of thought. So, for example, in Gelupa tradition, uh, one should familiarize oneself in the Lamrim, or in the Sakya, the Lamde, or in the Kagyu, the Tabo Targin, uh, or in the Nyingma tradition, the uh, the books such as the Words of My Words of My Perfect Master and uh, My Perfect Teacher, so on and so forth, are very uh, uh, very effective in making oneself uh, familiar and orient oneself with the a common path and once you are uh, once you have um, gained certain confidence in the common path then one can venture into these uh, the, uh, the three three years three months uh, three days retreat so uh, um, so unless you do that then it's like going on a drive going on a long drive with, uh, uh, with with an empty tank. So if you have no fuel in your car, even if you have the best car in the world, you cannot travel anywhere. So you need to uh, fill your tank uh, to go that far. So like for normal meditation, maybe you can just, it's okay if it's good, uh, you know, uh, if, if you have not much prior knowledge of the Dharma, you can still do some meditation and you can gain, gain some momentary relief and uh, peace of mind. But if you are going to meditate for three years, uh, then you will need a lot of fuel. Um, you know, when they sent uh, the rocket to Jupiter and uh, Mars to take pictures and stuff, they have to fill it with lots of uh, fuel tanks. So similarly, one has to fuel, one has to refill, but one has to fuel oneself with the uh, one has to fill uh, the tank of spirituality, tank of uh, uh, philosophical understanding of the Dharma, with the fuel of uh, common, uh, the fuel of uh, orientation in the common path. So just, <clears throat> I just remember something. So we're talking about a momentary uh, relief, momentary happiness. So, for example, uh, just remember that you know. Uh, in Vietnam, I think in all over the world, we are going through a lot of heat. There's a, um, it's very hot, and the climate is very hot in Vietnam right now. But at the same time, you are having the um, the luxury of p uh, the, the luxury of a, a fan or an air conditioner and fan and stuff. So, which is a, a momentary relief, a momentary happiness. So the heat is uh, permanently there, somewhat permanently there. But at the same time, one can get relief. Uh, from the fan and air condition and stuff. And another thing is the pandemic, which is uh, somewhat permanent. I think uh, we have to, we have been fighting with the pandemic for over a year now, and it's getting worse in I think all over the world. Uh, so, but at the same time, uh, the momentary uh, relief is we, we're getting the momentary relief from the vaccine and the medication and stuff. 
So there's always this and that, you know, to think of the people who who suffered, the <clears throat> who got sick during the pandemic and uh, succumbed to the pandemic, to got uh, died due to the pandemic before the vaccines were produced, made. So they have to, they do not have the luxury or the, of the, the karma to be vaccinated. So um, things like that, uh, but we are fortunate to uh, have the, uh, to, to have the uh, to, to have the possibility of the um, uh, momentary relief of getting vaccinated and so on and so forth. I think so. Um, just to remind, of course, you all know you, you know the best. Uh, just a reminder that uh, the pandemic is uh, really uh, life threatening, and uh, it's not something to be taken lightly. So all of you, please take care of yourself, and uh, you know keep hygiene, keep sanitized, and. Uh, you know, keep take care of yourself because uh, we all talk about the spiritual life but the spiritual life the spiritual practice can be only done through this physical body which we have to take care of and I am also doing my best to care of my to take care of myself and I just want to remind all of you to take care of yourself um, to keep uh, eat good food and uh, also have a, um, uh, a good mentality or a, a healthy mentality you know think in a positive terms. Um, of course, uh, the pandemic is re a reality it's, and we have to adapt to the new normal and stuff. But at the same time, there is always light at the end of the tunnel and there's a lot of uh, new discoveries are being made with the medical, in the, in the medical field and stuff. Um, so, um, you know, there is hope, never lose hope. Uh, but at the same time, take care of yourself. His Holiness always says something called uh, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. And uh, with this, we will conclude today's teaching. Thank you. Some, some people are so stubborn and say, you know, I always adhere to uh, religious methods. So I recite the mantra, do the pujas and stuff, and I, I'm not going to take any medication. I don't need any medication and stuff. I just adhere to the uh, religious practice. I think that is uh, that stubbornness, that stubbornness, um, that, that it's being so stubborn. And uh, I think that stubbornness, that uh, uh, stiffness is against the Buddha's teaching. Um, because when, 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 when you pray, when you recite the mantra, when you pray to the deity, when you pray to the Buddha, then the Buddha uh, gives you the eyes to see a doctor, the potential, the, the, the um, um, the, medic the medical treatments become a possibility for you. And when the, the Buddha's blessing arrive in the form of doctors and medical treatment and, uh, you know, uh, all this stuff, and when they appear in front of you, you should take use of them, you should use them. And uh, by taking care of your physical body, you will be able to take care of your mental status as well. So um, when you pray to the Buddhas, the Buddhas cannot miraculously dis make disappear all your... Uh, so. Uh, all of your, uh, you know, um, maladies, whether we are talking about the pandemic or any other kind of diseases or maladies that we have, the Buddhas just won't make it all disappear just like that. When you pray to the Buddhas, the Buddhas make you uh, able to see doctors that uh, you haven't been able to see, medical uh, um, facilities that you have not been able to get before, and those were uh, the emanation of the Buddha. Uh, so to speak, uh, that you must check, you must, uh, <clears throat> the chances of which you must not never miss. So, yeah, this is, we're talking about the pandemic right now, but this applies to everything in life. Um, when we pray to the Buddhas, uh, the Buddhas will not uh, miraculously appear and make everything disappear, or make every bad thing disappear, or everything, every good thing appear just like that. They will appear in different forms and you have to be able to see them. And when, when, when you see them, when you appreciate that, of course they are come through the blessings of the Buddha. Uh, one might also say that they are all there, but uh, they have been there forever. But due to the blessings of the Buddha, you are able to see them. Sometimes things are right in front of our own eyes and we are not able to see them. And uh, through, when we pray to the Buddhas, we cleanse our negativities and we it's like a mirror. When we clean the mirror, we see better. So uh, through which we see the possibilities to cure ourselves, uh, to defend ourselves, 
to um, make our lives better. And whenever we have those opportunities, whenever we see those chances, then we must take them. We must not say, oh, Buddha will take care of everything. That is uh, um, being stubborn. That I said, and as I said before, being stubborn and uh, stubbornness and stiffness is something against the Buddha's teaching. Buddha never taught us to be stiff and stubborn. Okay, uh, dedication. 